Hello everyone and welcome back to this course on implementing high availability solutions with Windows Server 2019. We are in section 4 of the course where we'll be talking about managing failover clustering. In this video we are going to configure role specific settings so let's get on to the lab and get started. Okay we are in failover cluster manager back on our uh, management workstation here we have the uh, previously created cluster here. The nodes are both up and running, cluster one and cluster two. First of all, I want to show you what configurations I've done uh, so far. And that is, if I go to the networks here, I have basically renamed the network uh, for easier use, so to speak. So uh, I've named the four network storage network, the dot three network, client network and the dot five network, the cluster private network. I have also renamed the disks because uh, as we are going um, on throughout the course, we will be creating several disks with uh, several uh, drive letters. And this way it would be uh, easier to, uh, to keep track of. So we have our bigger LAN here and I've named it iSCSI LAN 1, and that is the Z drive, exactly like we've uh, configured it in the server manager. And the smaller LAN, the quorum, and that is iSCSI quorum, and it is the Q drive. Okay, if we go to roles now, we have not configured basically we build our cluster uh we configured it but we have not added any roles yet so let's get on and add our first role to this uh, cluster our first instance by right clicking on roles and configure role now Let's skip to the next section. Here you are presented with, uh, let's say, out of the box services that you can uh, configure as roles in our cluster. And from the list of uh, the services, let's pick the DHCP server first. And as you may notice, first of all, I am prompted with an error here, which basically says that uh, the required role could not be found on any of the nodes. So. First of all, to be able to host any kind of application, service, or workload on your cluster, it needs to be first installed on all of the nodes which are participants in the cluster, basically, right? So, first of all, we will need to install the DHCP server role on both of the nodes, and that is cluster 1 and cluster 2. We can, again, easily accomplish this by leveraging, again, a remote uh, PowerShell. And let's do this now. Invoke commands. Again, computer name. We will run it on cluster 1 and cluster 2 at the same time. So cluster 1, comma, cluster 2. And the script block I want to run is add install, sorry, install Windows feature DHCP. That's about it. It doesn't require restart. So let's just hit enter and wait for the DHCP server role to get installed on both of uh, the servers, cluster one and cluster two. As you can see, uh, it won't take that long. And in a couple of moments, it should be done. Okay. After installing the DHCP roles on both of the cluster, as you can see, we have successfully installed it. Let's go back to failover cluster manager and start configuring our DHCP role. So I'm going to skip to the window, DHCP server. Now, first of all, you would need to give this instance a name, right? 
just as a best practice, you would name it just like a machine name, like server name, right? So it would be easier to uh, work with, so to speak. And also you would need to assign it an IP address. So let's name it DHCP, plain and simple. And let's give it an IP address of, uh, let's say 91. Let's quickly check if this IP is uh, free. 192.168.3.91. Okay, so we're not getting any replies. That's good. So we'll stick with the uh, .91 address. Now, the next bit is to select the storage. And now, as you can see, you have only one piece of storage available. Now, what you have to bear in mind is that if we select this piece of storage to configure our role, our instance, our service, right? If you will install another role on this cluster, you would need a totally different piece of storage for that role. So you can't install two instances to use the same piece of storage. That's one thing to keep in mind, but we'll get to that at the end of this uh, video. So let's select our uh, iSCSI LAN 1, click on Next. We are presented here with a confirmation. Of course, it will uh, create uh, the DHCP computer name in uh, the computer ZOU in Active Directory. We'll hit on Next and then it will start configure the role. Once it's done, as you can see on our roles now, we have a pending DHCP service role. I'm not going to quite go into how DHCP works and uh, what it does because there are several other courses which address that. I just want to show you how this DHCP instance would work as a highly available service configured as a role on a cluster. Basically, it would be moving around uh, the different nodes and you would have a highly available DHCP service hosted on your cluster. Now, the first thing I want to show you is that you can actually manage the DHCP service directly from the cluster. So if I right click uh, here and I click on manage DHCP server, first of all, I think we uh, will get presented with an error because oh, it, uh, it didn't. Actually, uh, what it did is it registered the DNS name of the uh, DHCP instance on our failover cluster quickly enough. If it uh, wouldn't have registered that DNS name, we would get presented with an error and we would have to flush the DNS on this particular machine before actually be able to manage the DHCP service instance from the cluster manager. So as you can see here, this is the DHCP uh, server. It looks like uh, your um, average console, uh, your average DHCP console with uh, server options, uh, policies, filters, and everything else. Now, of course, you can manage it from here, but again, you can easily manage it, of course, from, the, from your usual DHCP console, which you are accustomed with. So if we go here to the administrative tools and uh, open up the uh, DHCP console, we just need to uh, add a server, give it the name DHCP. It would discover the computer and uh, basically add it here to our console. Again, the normal DHCP console as you know it and uh, is the same one you've been working with so far. So that's just what I wanted to show you to uh, to qu quickly get a um, feel, let's say, of uh, how this instances of services work on a cluster. Let me close it down. And uh, as I've mentioned, uh, I want to show you that if we want indeed to add another role, let's uh, try to configure another role. 
let's go with the generic application here. Let's say uh, cmd.exe. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. Uh, let's call it uh, CMD. I'm going to quickly go through this to, to get to the storage part. I'm going to give it an IP of, uh, I don't know, 98. And when we go to next to the storage bit, we can obviously see that we have no storage available because on this cluster, we've added as cluster storage only our uh, iSCSI LAN 1 and that we have assigned to our DHCP instance in the cluster. So if we want to configure another role in the cluster, we will need to create a different piece of storage, a totally different piece of storage.